Hi, I'm Ralph. Welcome to my kitchen. I am really excited about what we're going to be cooking tonight. Pizza. Pizza is one of my favorite food groups. I grew up in the Chicago area. Chicago loves its pizza. Now, I know other parts of the country love pizza too. Places like New York, Detroit, uh, St. Louis, California. I'm not trying to put down those pizzas, but Chicago is known for a whole variety of different types of pizzas. They've got their thin and crispy, sometimes known as a cracker crust. Also sometimes known as a tavern style pizza. They've got their deep dish pizza. They've got stuffed pizza. They've got a pizza pie. And what we're gonna be doing tonight is a pan pizza. The pan pizza I'm talking about is gonna be in the style of a Pequod's Pizzeria or a Millie's Pizza or even Burt's Pizza. These are all well known for their Chicago pan pizza. So it's not really going to be a deep dish pizza, even though it looks very similar. It's a pan pizza. Let's get started. Now, pizza's ingredients tend to be measured in grams. Very precise. I mean, if you think that the people who enjoy steak like theirs done just a certain way and a certain amount of sear and stuff, that's nothing compared to people who love their pizza. They will experiment for months trying to get it down perfectly. And I mean perfectly. So a lot of things are measured in grams. I'm not used to measuring things in grams, so I had to have a little bit of a cheat sheet here as I was measuring out all the ingredients myself. So I'm going to start out with the water. Now the water should be between 90 and 105 degrees because we're going to be putting yeast into it. And this is currently reading 99 degrees, so we're in good shape. So just a check, that is 280 grams of water. To that, I'm adding yeast. And I'll have all the precise ingredients and their quantities listed down below. Also have both sugar and kosher salt. I've got some oil, olive oil, and now the flour. I am using bread flour. I know a lot of pizzas are made with a double loaf flour. This is not one of those. This is made with a bread flour. Not all purpose flour or AP flour, bread flour. I'm adding that in here and just going to be mixing this all up. Now you notice that I put in my water first and then started adding all my dry ingredients to it. Okay, it is starting to look like what they call a shaggy ball. So you can kind of see that right here. It's not perfect yet, but it's still in the hydration stage. So I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to put this in another smaller bowl that I've got here. Put that all in here together. And I am going to do what they call auto lease this, which is a way of saying we're letting it kind of rise a little bit and hydrate. I'm going to get that covered and I'm going to set this aside to wait probably about 20, 25 minutes and then we're going to pull it out and start the kneading process. Now an ideal spot to put that when you're letting it do this is actually in the oven that has been turned off, no heat in there, other than I turned on the light bulb. The light bulb is all the heat you need for ideal rising conditions. So that's what I'm about to, to do here next. Okay, while we are waiting for the uh, dough to rise up a little bit here, I'm gonna start working on the sauce. Now the sauce, I'm gonna start out by putting in, oh, one tablespoon of sugar, Actually, what the heck, a little bit more. Because we tend to like our sauce rather sweet in the Chicago area. And another tablespoon of minced garlic. And a tablespoon of olive oil. Little pinch of oregano here. It doesn't take much. Oregano goes a long way. Add a little bit more though. Then I need a teaspoon of kosher salt, actually two teaspoons of that. And finally, 
I'm going to be adding the crushed San Marino tomatoes. I'm going to be blending that all together. I am not cooking this. This is going to be a no-cook sauce. I'm just blending it together. What I'm going to be doing is I am going to be putting it into the refrigerator and while it's in there, it's going to be letting all those flavors merge together. Mm. This is smelling really good already. So I think that is good enough. Put a lid on that and it's going to be ready for the refrigerator. Okay, just got the dough out of the oven, the oven that had not been turned on. It has risen up and it's time to take it out and start the kneading process. So we're going to need this for oh, about five minutes or so. Okay, it's been about five minutes. And I think the, the dough ball is looking pretty good here. As you can see, that's what we have. Now I'm going to be putting it into this bowl that I've already put a little bit of olive oil into the bottom of. Slip that in there. I'm going to be covering that. And this is going to be going into the refrigerator, in our case, till sometime late tomorrow. Then I will be back and I will show you the next steps. So I will see you then. Hi, we're back. This is day two. And I've got a helper here, my grandson. This is Jet. And he is going to help me grease up the pans. Now, I've got a brand new pan from Lloyd's. It's pre-seasoned, but it's going to require a lot of grease for that deep dish pizza. For, I'm sorry, not deep dish, but a pan pizza to be coming out of there easily. Now it's already got a pre-seasoned coating on it. It's baked in there. It's one of those safe coatings, doesn't have any of those funny chemicals, but that's not gonna be enough. So I'm gonna be putting some butter flavored Crisco on here. Now it does not need to be butter flavored, but I kind of like the butter flavor in the, the pizza dough uh, when it, it comes out of the oven, cause you know, I'm just kind of bougie that way, I guess. So I'm going to put some of this in here and my helper, Jet, is gonna help me move it all around. Go ahead, spread that around. See, this can be a great family project even. Teach them how to make a pizza early. And I'm gonna get that all the way up the edges here. Put it on very liberally. Okay, let me spin the pan around a little bit. Now, this Crisco is also gonna act, believe it or not, kind of a little bit as a glue for when we start spreading the dough in here. Okay, that's good. Hands out. Yeah. Now, you would think that this would be enough, but it is not. I'm also gonna be using, in this case, a little avocado spray. Avocado spray, yes. And putting that on the, the outside edge. Now, if you have a little Pam, that will work also. But I'm just putting that on the outside edge. And that is how the pan is looking right now. Time to get our gloves off. Be right back with the dough. Now, this is what my dough is looking like after it's been, you know, kind of fermenting for the last 24 hours. I'm gonna pull that out of the bowl here. It's all coming out in one nice piece here. We're, well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna slap it down and push it toward the edges. Okay, help me out and then push it toward the edge. Boy, this is coming out really good. You can see, I was looking in the pan. Now, what we have to do is I'm gonna let this rise up until it comes about, no, oh, halfway up the, the pan here. Then it's gonna be ready to start building the pizza. So, this is a good point for us to stop and we will come back as soon as this has risen up some. And the way I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna stick it into the oven no temperature. Do not turn it on. Just put it in the oven with the oven light on. That's going to be all the warmth that it needs to help it rise. That'll be the perfect conditions. Okay, I've let the dough rise. It's been probably about two hours. 
Depending on the weather outside and the humidity factors, it could take anywhere from 45 minutes to about two and a half hours. In this case, it took about two hours. And you do want to have that covered during that time. Now, I want you to take a look at the, the dough here. What I'm about to do now is I'm going to be dimpling the, the dough. I'm going to leave about, oh, an inch and a half all the way around. And then I'm just going to dimple this like a golf ball all throughout the whole interior until it basically looks like that. Next, the cheese. We are going to be putting cheese all around the outside, right up to the top of the, the pan. Now you'll notice the dough does not go up the side as a, a traditional deep dish pizza does because this cheese is actually going to become the side crust. What we're going to get is it's going to basically be caramelizing on the side. It'll look maybe a little burnt, but it's not really going to be burnt. It's just going to be caramelized and that is forming our crust. We're going to have about two pounds of cheese on this pizza. It's time to start putting the sauce on. Now I measured this out and about three of these little dippers here are going to equal about eight ounces. Oh, that's my oven preheating. I've got my oven preheated on the convection set to 425. We're going to be baking this for about 19 minutes. It is going to take just about six scoops here to get the right amount of toppings in, uh, sauce in here. Looking really good. Next, I'm going to be putting in some mushrooms. And for it to be a Chicago style pizza, it really needs to have some sausage. Now as I'm putting them in, I'm trying to flatten them out a little bit, which will make it a little bit easier for the cooking to get them fully cooked all the way through. Okay, <clears throat> and now to finish it off, I'm just gonna add a little bit of fresh, real Parmesan. That's what we have. Now I'm gonna be placing this into the convection oven for about 19 minutes. Okay, we're back. It's out of the oven. It did take a couple more minutes than I was expecting. Uh, I checked it, gave it a couple more minutes. You might need to do the same thing. Another alternative to doing the convection oven would be setting your oven to 500 degrees and letting it cook for about 22 to 23 minutes. Okay, I got it out of the pan. I put it on a cooling rack. It was probably not the smoothest move I have ever made. Uh, it kind of got a little bit more limp than I was expecting during that, that slide, and so some of it kind of collapsed a little bit. Here is my suggestion. I tried to bake it the way Millie's in Chicago bakes it, in a convection oven at 425 for 19 minutes. I left it in for a few minutes longer. My suggestion would be doing this at home in your oven. I would do a 500 degree oven for probably 23 to 25 minutes. And you're probably going to get a more crispy, firm crust on the bottom. I think that was our problem. I think it would have come out of the pan easier if that had been set a little bit better. But all in all, it came out pretty nicely. And I think that as it cools down, it, it's going to firm up here a little bit. Take a look here. Let's get a close up. Check out this Frico going on here. Time to get your Frico on. But this is looking really good. Let me take a slice of it.
Now, let's see how this tastes. Hmm. That is so much cheese, and I'm loving that, that sweetness in the sauce. The chunks of tomato are coming through. Get one here with some sausage on it. Mm-hmm. This is excellent. Got just some of that crust in here. Got that caramelized crust. That is very, very good. Tell you what, I can't wait to, to finish this. So if you like it, hit the like below. Maybe consider a subscription. I gotta get back to this pizza. So I will catch y'all the next time. Bye-bye.